So, let me now start a video lecture series on price indices. And price indices attempt to measure the average price level in the economy, which when you get into it is actually a lot trickier than you might think. Before we go into price indices specifically, I'd first like to take some time out to talk about economic indexes or economic indices. And you kind of hear about this stuff if you listen to business reporting or that sort of stuff from time to time. And you may hear about the mention of the home sales index or the help wanted index or the purchasing managers index or lots of things out there. There are all sorts of indexes out there. And an economic index combines or aggregates, as economists often say, a lot of economic data into a single number so that people can sort of get a handle on what's going on in the economy or some particular subsector of the economy in reference to a single number. And you hear about stock market indexes and that kind of thing. A common thing that people do when compiling economic indexes is they take one of two approaches. One is that we're going to compare everything to what it was at some beginning time when the index is initially established. So here we're using the index to track the level of some variable. So we might sort of go, okay, there were 3 million homes sold or whatever in 2000, and we're going to track everything relative to what it was when it was the year 2000. So we're going to take the number of homes sold divide by 3 million, and then multiply by 100. So that if more than 3 million homes are sold, we're going to have an index level that's above 100. If less than 3 million, then below 100. So you can see how we sort of make it into something comprehensible, as opposed to if I just report, well, there were 3 million homes sold, then it's hard to put that in context. So putting everything relative to the base here helps us get everything into context. The other type of index that's sometimes used is more often used to track the growth of something. And in this case, what's usually done is if something's the same as it was last year or last month or something like that, we call that an index value of 50. And then if it's below what it was, in whatever our very recent reference period is, last year, last month, etc., it's that indicates that the variable is shrinking. And then if it's above 50, then it's growing. I personally prefer um, the type 1 that I've called it here because if I have this information and I have the information on what it was last year, then I can figure out whether or not it's growing or shrinking. Whereas this second type of index, um, really only tells us what it was relative to the very recent past, which is sometimes not super useful. Price indices, and that's what we're going to focus on for the rest of this series of lecture, price indices try to measure average prices. And if you've watched the lecture series on GDP, you've already seen one particular type of price index. You've seen the GDP deflator. And we're going to mostly talk today about the Consumer Price Index, which tracks the price of goods that consumers pay. Another interesting thing that's come about in the last couple of years is what's called the Billion Prices Project. So the CPI has sort of a long history going back a long way. The Billion Prices Project um, attempts to sort of do something similar that that we're going to track the prices that consumers pay, but they use a kind of web, web crawler technique to go out there and survey different uh, online retailers and track prices that way. So it sort of automates all the work that goes into creating the CPI. And generally speaking, the Billion Prices Project, um, which you can go ahead and Google and look up for yourself, has a pretty good record of tracking the CPI. I think I'd say the advantages and disadvantages are the billion prices information is very real time. On the other hand, because it's only tracking online prices, it both it's sort of highly selected data. Even if we were just looking at books, you know, Amazon's prices don't perfectly track all prices out there. And of course, lots of things aren't sold online at all. So it's not that good of a tracker of 
consumer prices. On the other hand, it's much faster. So if what you really care about is fast, then the Billion Prices project might be great. And if you were really interested in getting an, an advanced signal of what is likely to happen with the CPI, then the Billion Prices information might be a good place to start.